Welcome to the Utah Football Fans Podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, go Utes. Okay, we're going to do our end of year awards since it is the end of college football season, which is so sad, but um, these kind of, they encompass all of college football. It's not just Utah. We kind of broadened it this year <laughs> because there may have not been so many to choose from just by Utah season this year. So, okay, we'll start with. Feel free in the chat to throw your stuff out. Yeah, please give us your answers. Let's see, which one do I want to start with? We'll just start with what was your best dollar that you spent this season? That one's an easy one to start with. Who do you want? I'm, I know your guys' answer, but I didn't go. Go, no. Gary, go. Okay. The best money I spent was the money I didn't spend by going to the Vegas Bowl. <laughs> oh, that's That's a roundabout answer, but okay. There it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bryn, what's yours? I mean, yeah, the Pac-12 championship is is mine just because even though Utah wasn't in it, that was so much fun to be there and to be at that game. And true. It, it was worth going to it to see those two teams play and to see that game. So that's mine. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I expected Gary's to be. Um, but he didn't no, play it, the game right. So <laughs> no, I'm serious. I I would like to have gone to the Vegas Bowl if there was something riding on it and stuff, but man, I'm glad I didn't spend the money, so I saved the money. The but best. having, but yeah, that championship game was fun. Great game too. The best money I spent was I bought two Mountain Dews during the Arizona State game, and it was the middle of the day. It was like sitting on the sun for that game. I think it was the Arizona State game. That was the best money I spent all year because it was so freaking hot. Because we didn't have a single night game. All year. I know. So that awful. So yeah, that's that's probably my uh my best money I spent. That's it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, because it saved me. It saved my, me. I didn't my spend other a lot of money one, this year, actually. <laughs> well, my other one was the money we spent for the Florida tailgate. That was that was awesome. good because that was really fun to meet that was bunch, fun. to meet a bunch of you and meet even Florida fans. So that that was my other one. So that was that's a good a one. Good one. Okay. Um what do you think was the best play of the year? So this can be any college football, not just Utah. This was kind of hard to think of. What's your best play? That's hard. That's what's so hard is I focus so heavily on Utah, right? But it's like open it to college football. But for me, I'm going to go first. First play, of the, first play of the year. The Bryson Barnes touchdown against Florida. Now, it's kind of sad that it was downhill from there. But <laughs> I have never seen Utah open a season with a play like that ever. And so that just so unexpected to go up like that. It was awesome. It was, that was, that was fantastic. There's a bunch of people that agree with you, James. There's yep. that's what they're saying. The first play of the year. That was their favorite. Yep. Gary. So if we extend it out, uh, the best play of the year, I can't believe it, oh, but no. I was watching it. I was watching it is that, what was it, first and goal, Alabama, Auburn? They'd been knocked back, first and goal, to like the 30. And it was fourth down, so they had to they had to get it in the end zone. It was fourth and 31. Okay, fourth <laughs> and 30 run, 31, and Milrow throws it into the corner of the end zone for a touchdown and beats freaking Auburn. Auburn and that's what actually got him you know, the game against Georgia meant something and got him into the playoffs. So for me, that play, I mean, it was like a miracle, but yeah, that was the play of the year for me. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Um, Tony, I'm with you, man. Yeah. The Bama fourth, it was. fourth and 31. Fourth and 31. And he just, I don't even know how that happened, but yeah. That's so dumb. Um, I mean, the Florida play, that's mine. And of course the field goal against USC, that's a, that's probably one of the best Utah plays. But the one I picked was, do you remember the Miami-Georgia Tech game? And Miami had basically <laughs> won the game, but instead of oh, taking yeah. instead yeah. of taking a knee, they fumbled it. And then Georgia Tech went 74 yards 
and scored and a touchdown. Plays. So it was like the last play, the guy chucks it from the 50 yard line, hits his receiver in the end zone, time runs out, and Georgia Tech wins. <laughs> that was yeah. awesome. I that was just one of the ones that stood out to me. I thought that was funny. Okay, then Gordon, let's... Gordon, you're wrong, buddy. Oh, <laughs> the the, the... to Franklin for the touchdown versus Utah. My other I one mean... was oh, was Bryson Barnes scramble. Somebody said it against uh, USC to set up the field goal that you mentioned. That scramble, yeah, I mean, holy cow, that was awesome. That was awesome. So many good ones. Okay, um, then what was the best game of the year for you? Best game me, of first. the year. Best game of the year. For who go? You want me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I. Well, if I'm going, well, I'll go, I'll, I'll just go quick. So nationally, well, no, this isn't nationally. <laughs> outside of you, not a Utah game. The yeah. the Pac-12 championship game game was great. I know for the Oregon people who are in the chat or listening, watching. No, they're not happy with it, but that was a fun game for me. That was a, that was a good game. But the game, if I'm going to say Utah, was beating USC at the end with a field goal. Absolutely. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's just beautiful. Always beautiful. <laughs> of course. Yeah. James? I'm, so Utah, the U.S. No. <laughs> I went back and forth beating Florida at home. I mean, that's just legendary, right? The, the fact that we can talk about that. It's like we talk about beating Michigan at home yeah. and it's been eight years, right? So having that, um, but the USC, the last time we play them on the road, last second, that's the game for me when it comes to, to Utah. And then nationally, this one was tough. There was some really fun games this year, um, but I, I would probably say the Georgia or not Georgia, um, Alabama, Michigan game in the playoff. That game had everything. That game had everything. And a playoff game goes to overtime on fourth and goal. I mean, that's you can't you can't write a script better than that. Yeah. Um, True. Ron F in the chat, Ohio State versus Notre Dame. That was a good one. I had forgotten yeah. about that. I totally forgot about that game. That was a great game. The Utah, it's the USC. I mean, just the fact that we had to go to the Coliseum, backup QB, Vaki had his breakout game. We beat him on the last second field goal. We make Caleb cry. He wouldn't talk to the media. All the good stuff. That was he go home with his cats and watch him go movie. hang out with his dog because he just can't handle the pressure. Um, but probably nationally. I think the Pac-12 championship and then also the SEC championship game, mm -hmm. that Georgia-Alabama game, both those games, back-to-back -back days. But then the playoff games, like, it's it's hard because there were some really awesome games. I don't know if I can choose between all of them, but that was mine. Um, okay, what was your biggest disappointment of the year, either nationally or <laughs> Utah? <laughs> uh, for me, it's easy. It uh, is th how the season played out. You know, just all the injuries and just everything about it. Uh, that was the disappointment of the year. It's just one thing after another, after another, after another. So, yeah, nothing comes close for me. Utah's season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that was that's my real answer, but I knew it'd be yours. So I did something else. But you're right. Like every time, like every morning it was like, OK, who's out for the year now? And you get on and you're like, oh, great. It's Ellis this time. Like it's just it was crazy. My biggest disappointment, USC. What? How do you guys, honestly, with all the talent out there, the the Heisman Trophy winner, blah blah blah, seven and five. That's the best you can muster is seven and five. That's my biggest disappointment of the year. USC. What? Was, yeah. Not not disappointment You're in the fact about like, them. Oh my gosh. Other than Utah is what he's saying. Call. Why does eight and five? I guess eight and five. Se it's seven, seven and five. Bowl games don't count anymore. It's just I can't believe that when you got that much talent, that you can't like every season should be nine and three guaranteed or better. And it just it was embarrassing sometimes to watch. I enjoyed it. I loved watching them lose, but it was it's like come on guys. So that's mine. That's a good one. Um, SC needs to get 
Here, you know, they should really call me up and get my opinion on this because here, <laughs> here's here's what they need to do. Is they need to get a SoCal guy, a coach who coached or lives in Southern California and knows the vibe of Southern California and knows the coaches, the high school coaches. Don't bring an outside dude like Lincoln Riley down there. They need a guy who connects to the society there and keep all those guys there. I think if they would do that, it would be a big step in the right direction. But you know what? I don't really feel bad for them, but there you go. No, not at all. Well, um, they're they're in trouble going into the yeah. to the Big Ten, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Texas are. Mike, yeah, they right. Are. They don't have the physicality that that type of football. I mean, look at Michigan last night. It was a completely different style of football than what USC can play, and they'll get run over. They'll win some games against Wisconsin and Indiana. Okay, great. But when it comes to the actual big boys, they need to get some physicality in there for sure. Um, a lot of people in the chat are saying the Utah Oregon game was your biggest disappointment. That's that is a good one because it we just got so blown out that was unexpected. And after game day being here, that is a good one. Mine, um, besides Utah's full season as the disappointment, was kind of the Big Ten. There was such high hopes for the Big Ten with Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State, like all beating each other up. And it just didn't really turn out that way. Penn State was a big disappointment, I felt like, especially when they played Michigan. I don't know. I thought that was going to be more exciting between those three teams, and it kind of turned out to not be so much. Okay, so then what is your biggest surprise of the year, James? Man, my biggest surprise, it's hard because I kind of saw it coming, but not to this level, Arizona. I, they are, I mean, we talked about it last year. We talked about it at the beginning of this year. I said they were going to be better, but man, they are, they're going to be very dangerous going forward. I was, I'm very impressed with what they're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Arizona, that's my answer. That's a good one. Of course it is. I don't know. My biggest surprise is, is, um, the num uh, honestly is the uh couple of the guys hitting the portal that I didn't would expect they'd hit the portal and a couple of the guys going into the NFL those were my biggest surprises Broughton was going to start ends up at TCU that's a, that's a surprise to me and Mikey Matthews wants to leave this program to go to Cal yeah we don't know everything behind the scenes, but those that that surprises me. And honestly, a big surprise is Vaki choosing right now to go to the NFL. We've said it last time, but it's it's that that jump is huge, and it just surprises me. He thinks he's ready. Now, prove me wrong. I hope he does, but man, it worries me. But those those are my surprises, to be honest with you. Those are good ones. Um, my biggest surprise was the Colorado hype train. I. Like, I just wasn't expecting it to happen the way it did. <laughs> and I'm like, I think we all expected that they'd have a better year than they did last year, because how could you not have a better year? But it was just the hype for those first couple of weeks. And even some national people that I really respect and like to listen to, even they were like jumping on it and saying that Colorado was going to win the Pac-12 and they're going to be in the playoffs and like, all this stuff after just two games, plus all the other crap that came along with the Colorado hype train, that surprised me the most this season. I wasn't expecting it to be what it ended up being. <laughs> Fair enough. Get on the train, baby. Okay. Um, let's do your Pac-12 player of the year. I We narrowed this down to Pac-12 because, I don't know, I feel like, all of college football, that's a lot. So I don't know. Give us your Pac-12. Go quick player. through these. Yeah, Pac-12 player of the year. Well, I for me, it's it's, it's Penix. It's Penix for me. for me. Yeah. I, I mean, there's some competitors that were right there, like Bo Nix in my view. However, Penix got two wins against Oregon. So I'm I'm sticking with Penix. I mean, Penix is the answer, but I'm actually going – I'm going with Ellis. Oh, 
I'm going with Ellis. I, the, at his position, his level of dominance and really kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, holy cow. So I think he's going to be a, a stud in the NFL. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with our boy Ellis. Good one. K pack 12 coach of the year. Did you give it? Yeah. Penix. Oh yeah. Penix. Okay. Okay. Your pack 12 coach of the year. It's DeBoer. well for me. Okay. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, for me, it's like one, a one B, but Jeb fish at Arizona. He's yeah, got that one. rolling. So I could, I could say, I could give it to him just as easy, but DeBoer, I mean, come on, they were undefeated and right. just got beat in the, you know, someone's got to lose that game. They happen to lose it. So, yeah, but honestly, Jeb Fish, he's doing a good job. It's going to be fun getting revenge on him. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> okay, and our last award, <clears throat> the Jackass of the Year. The Jackass of the whole year. So this is the best award to be given. We'll have a trophy. We'll send to whoever wins it. <laughs> Who is your jackass of the year? My jackass. You're going to have to have a lot of, well, my jackass. Oh, no. Of the year goes to the Colorado cult. The thing <laughs> you were talking about. Okay. <laughs> that... It was the hype. It's what you said. The hype before the season. That they're coming. They're going to dominate. And they went one and eight. And you would think once you go one and eight. You might tamp it down a little bit. Until you actually do something. But the Colorado Colt is at high frequency still. Saying the same thing that they were saying before. And they went one and eight. Now they're saying the same thing. It, it, it's just to me the cult a joke you know if they do some things then fine but my gosh it's uh i i and here's the thing is i feel bad for everyone being played in colorado well not too bad but after next year they're gonna be without a coach and they're gonna be looking for a coach and a whole bunch of guys are gonna be gone uh, and it's that whole cult thing that is the jackass of the year award for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. James. Um, I, I mean, I, don't, <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I got, I gotta go with our, our favorite boy, fine bomb on it. Oh, fine bomb. Is it, it's, yeah. It's low hanging fruit. If we're being really honest, I just now the last couple of weeks, he's been a lot better, but his inability to just pull his own head away from the sec is just, in, it's incredible. Um, and I can't, I can't listen to the guy. He drives me, he drives me insane because he's just so sec. And I'm sitting here going, but the sec was the third best conference this year. The sec was the third best conference this year behind the pac 12 and the Big Ten, but it not listening to Feinbaum, you would think that... I was going to say something. Um, <laughs> I had to censor myself there, Bryn. I don't Thank know. you. I'm, I'm going to go with Feinbaum. Just can't... I can't stand the guy. I could give him the jackass of the week every week. I it just... I can't do it because he just can't be honest. That's the thing, dude. He finally... He has finally come out and... Oh, Michigan did a great job, but I just feel like he's hedging it. Because I, he's just praying. He's just praying that the NCAA takes the championship away. Because he has said that. I mean, he has all but come out and said that this is a fake championship. And it's just like, shut up, dude. You, you're you weigh 109 pounds. It's like, shut up. Go. Ah, I can't stand him. That's my brand. Go. Okay. I mean, a lot of people in the chat are saying Caleb, saying Riley. Which those those would be good ones. Maybe we could get a towel made that says "Jackass of the Year" and send <laughs> it to Caleb. He can wear it on his head. Um, but no, mine is Kleofkov. Hello. And um, last year, ways. last year, mine was Larry Scott. Who would have thought that a year later we'd be giving the Jackass of the Year to the other Pac-12 commissioner for? his inability to save this conference. And what really pisses me off is over the last couple weeks, Klyovkov was at the sugar bowl game. I think he was at the national championship. He was there last night. last night. 
he's soaking it all in and the comments he's making about like well if the teams had just been patient then we still and it's like dude you blew this thing up and yep. you're not you're still not taking any accountability for ruining it all so he is the jackass of the year in Bryn my wins. opinion yep i agree that's the Ugh. right answer Ugh. that's the answer all right well that's all we've got tonight we've gone an hour leave us your comments let us know how you feel make sure you do like the video make sure you're subscribed you're following we'd love a super thanks or a super chat everyone's agreeing with me because i am right as always <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just how it goes. What's next? Oh, Ron F. No, we're we're not going anywhere. Someone gave us a comment last week about they're going to miss us. We're not going anywhere. We're going to do off-season stuff. We're figuring it all out. That's why you need to hit the notification button so you know when we're recording and we're going live because we're going to be around. Yeah, there's NFL stuff. We got NFL. Yeah. A lot of NFL. Yeah. We got, look, we got some uh, NHL. So you folks that don't like NHL, the NHL, or follow it, you'll want to follow it. Because once you listen to us, you'll be in. I guarantee it. But no, then there's right. other football stuff. And there is going to be happening. So yeah, we'll keep we'll be keep doing it. We appreciate all of you, by the way. Thanks for tuning in and checking us out. Even if you're not Ute fans, it's good to have you here. We appreciate everybody. It's good fun. Go Utes. Gary, did you calm down there? Mellow. Mellow. Oh, yeah. Mellowed out. <laughs> <laughs>